Okay, well, welcome to Coffin State University's Open House. Um, my name is Mrs. Singor. I'm um, a retention specialist in the office of the University Academic Advising Center. Um, I'll be the moderator today, but I'm also here to um, introduce Dr. Fars, who is the chair over the College and Arts of Science um, and Education Department. So it seems to only be like a few of you, so you all will have the ability to ask as many questions as you want, participate as, many, as much as you want, um, and really get some great information. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Fars. Thanks, Tracy. Um, so hi, I am Seth Forrest. Uh, I am the chairperson of the Department of Humanities. Um, so in my department, we have four different majors that I'll talk about in a little bit of detail later. Um, I have been at Coppin. This is my 11th year. Um, before that, I got my PhD at the University of California, um, and I got my bachelor's degree at Clemson. Uh, in 2000. So uh, I've been at a lot of colleges, uh, big and small. Um, it's been really nice to be at Coppin for the past few years because uh, we, we throw around the word the Coppin family a lot, um, but it really is a, a nice, friendly place. Um, I've never really known a school where students and staff and faculty administrators um, when I, when I first got hired, we, we actually had dinner at the president's house um, and at most of the other colleges I went to. Um, if you ever put eyes on the university president or deans, um, it was a really special occasion. Uh, so Coppin is a, a tight knit kind of place like that. Um, you know everybody, uh, everyone is accessible. Um, in a way that it, it just doesn't happen if you went to uh, someplace huge like Towson or uh, College Park. Um, you know, here I have a max of like 20 students in all my classes, um, and, and even 20 is kind of big for uh, the majors in the humanities department. Um, so we, we've really got that little, uh, you know, tight community feel. Um, everybody knows everybody. Um, in a way, you know, you get the good and the bad of uh, the family environment because if you're, uh, you know, if you've missed a few days and you're you're maybe uh, a little late on a big assignment, um, you might hear about it from your professor. Uh, but again, it's hearing about it in the same way that you're going to hear it from your mom if uh, your room is a mess, you know, um, or you're going to hear it from your husband if you've uh, let the car run out of gas, you know. Um, everybody's doing it out of concern, love, and that kind of thing. It's a good place. Um, so our department, uh, let me share my screen, and I have a PowerPoint, uh, but I, I really uh, hate PowerPoint. If this were the normal world that I hope to God we get back to soon enough, um, I would be on stage walking around. I would have a nice suit and tie, and I would have done something with my hair. Um, I probably would have even shaved. Uh, but such as it is, here I am in my comfy sweater in my basement, um, and I'm going to throw up a, a three-slide PowerPoint for you. Um, all I really want is this visual aid so that I can talk a little bit about our uh, our programs. So uh, we like to say in my department that we we are the place you come uh, to study what you love. Uh, we have all those kinds of programs in art and English and history that honestly um, people are going to raise an eyebrow and ask you uh, what the heck you're going to do uh, with that major. Um, those people have heard the myth, man. Uh, we, we sometimes take uh, a bit of a bad rap uh, everybody says, oh, you're going to major in English and be the, the person working at the coffee shop who's read the most books. Uh, but we go way beyond that. Um, uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, we, we were getting together with folks uh, in the corporate offices of Verizon Media to set up a, a mentoring program uh, with our students and, and some of their execs. And... Uh, VP locally of the uh, Verizon Media corporate headquarters in Baltimore County 
Uh, he's an English major. Um, we do all kinds of things. Uh, history majors get uh, good grades in law school. Um, theater majors know how to do all manner of events planning and uh, program management. Um, dance majors, uh, it's not just about learning how to move the body. You know, um, it's also about theorizing uh, what it is to be human, what it is to be in safe and inclusive space, to embrace diversity, to empathize with other people. Um, you know that over the past four or so years, we've really seen uh, that we all need to know uh, how to read a text and think about it critically in the era of fake news and uh, you know uh, a, a, a presidency that is uh, pretty truth compromised from time to time. We've really seen uh, that the skills that we help you build in a humanities major are, are really skills that America needs every single day. Um, and, and employers across the board, they think the same thing. Um, so here's what we offer. Um, what, what can you do with one of our majors? Um, you can kind of do anything you want with one of our majors. Um, if this were the usual open house, I would have to uh, make my colleagues a little uncomfortable because I would say this in front of them. Uh, but you know, if you major in nursing, um, what can you be, Tracy? Well, if you major in nursing, more than likely you'll be a registered nurse um, or you will move on to have your own practice. So it's more of that one of that streamlined, you know, you know what you're getting when you get into it thing. And there is no doubt that uh, nursing is, uh, you know, an exceptionally noble practice and profession. It, there's absolutely no doubt that if you majored in nursing, um, you would probably be employable for uh, as long as you wanted to work. Um, that said, majoring in uh, a really specific specialized degree program, social work, nursing, even education, um, you're a little bit locked into to sort of the, the pathway that you're on. Um, I like to think that in English, history, dance, uh, our programs in urban arts, what you're really getting is a skill set and a toolkit that can take you through any kind of job field. Um, so again, everybody says, well, what are you going to do with that? Uh, but really, the answer is kind of anything I want. You know, if you want to teach, you can teach. If you want to go to law school, um, all of the law schools say that our graduates make better law students than do criminal justice majors um, who have really only studied a tiny fraction of what the legal field represents. Um, we can go into politics, we can go into the park service, we can go into government, uh, we can go into education, we can go into uh, business. Uh, if you've got a business degree, um, obviously you're, you're going into that, that pathway from one particular angle, um, but majors in English, um, they can do all the things. Majors in history, uh, they can really do all the things. They've read uh, copious amounts of text and they know how to critique it and how to write about it. Um, they know how to speak publicly. So again, we're, we're really looking at flexible programs that teach you uh, a huge skill set uh, without really locking you into something. So our four programs are a BA in English um, and we're currently working on uh, expanding that into English and media studies. Um, that's really been the direction of our faculty uh, hiring over the past few years. Um, I include myself in that. I probably work a little bit more in sort of multimedia studies than I do in sort of traditional literature. Um, we have real strengths in uh, creative writing, professional writing. Um, we definitely do have strengths in uh, the study of literature, uh, but we also have faculty who study um, music and pop culture as forms of sort of new literature. Um, and we've got uh, all kinds of interesting courses uh, from Afrofuturism on sort of sci-fi from the, the black diaspora. 
um, all the way through uh, graphic novels and anime and things like that. Um, we're definitely uh, well beyond the whole uh, dead white male tradition that, that might still be going on that I studied when I was uh, an undergrad. Um, we're, we're way more diverse and inclusive um, in the kind of range of things that we study in the English uh, degree program. So the other is a, a BS in history, and in history, our, our strengths are definitely in sort of public history. So we've got a lot of graduates working in DC, in the museums, um, and in the National Archives. Um, we've gotten a lot of students placed into good grad programs in history. Um, Howard, we've got a student right now who's uh, awaiting a decision on his application to the PhD program in history at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, our history majors, it's a small major. You would definitely have a tight relationship with all of your professors in that program, uh, but they, they do big things. They finish and do big things. Um, in the, the visual and performing arts area, we offer a BS in dance, which is completely unique. Um, I think that we're the only Maryland HBCU that has a, a standalone program like this in dance. Um, it's sort of a, a blend. There's a lot of uh, performance and technique study in the dance degree program, uh, but there's also uh, pretty pretty significant study in sort of dance theory and other kinds of critical theory, um, choreography. Uh, there's a bit of somatic study, so it, it kind of takes you um, a little bit into kinesiology and that kind of thing, um, sort of studying the body, but it also definitely has a, a, a large cultural studies component so that it's studying uh, dance as an art form among other art forms. Um, we also offer sort of our, our probably our most dynamic program um, and, and probably the most unique program that we offer is the BS in urban arts. And that has three potential uh, concentrations. There's a theater concentration, and we have strengths uh, both in acting and in the sort of back of the house uh, aspects of production design. Um, we've got an expert in lighting. Um, we're doing really new things. Um, even though our theater facilities are small, uh, we, we've really invested in some new technologies. Um, we're doing all kinds of uh, electronic 3D set designs um, and lighting designs. Uh, they're doing good things in that program. Um, really the kind of uh, partnerships uh, with center stage, arena players, um, we, we, we place students in really impressive uh, MFA programs, so that's sort of the next step if you wanted to do uh, grad school in design, production design, and acting. Uh, we just placed a student into a grad program at the University of North Carolina, and she could choose. She had options. Uh, she even had a couple of Ivy League offers uh, before she really decided that that program fit for her. Uh, but we we have good actors coming out of Coppin's theater concentration. Um, we've also got concentrations in visual art and design. Um, our specialization there, probably uh, better than anything right now, is digital photography studies. Um, and then we've got the concentration in arts administration, which is totally unique to the area um, and in pretty high demand in Baltimore. Um, if you know anything about the city, uh, there's a lot of investment in arts programs and there's definitely a lot of hunger out there for the kinds of students who are coming out of Coppin State. Um, energetic, uh, African-American students to guide uh, a renaissance, really. Um, Baltimore has been an art city for a long time, uh, but it's mostly been that kind of city that has uh, really been dominated by people who look like me in the arts administration, uh, in the office parts of, uh, you know, leading museums, leading arts programs, uh, but that's changing and it's changing fast. And this kind of program is uh, is really designed to put you into 
into the you know the decision making uh, policy setting that goes into uh, arts in Baltimore and elsewhere. Um, so those are our those are our four programs. Um, again, uh, we're we're really giving you skills in in these degrees um, that could go into what what you might think you'd be going into uh but there's you know there's really no limitations for for folks who come out with these kinds of uh you know these kinds of abilities so i won't kill you with my powerpoint anymore um do you have questions maybe i should say also we've got a live uh a small but live audience um, so obviously I'll take your questions, uh, but if you decided to pop in and watch this episode of the open house, um, feel free to send me your your question as an email. My email is s forest with two R's. That's F O R R E S T at coppin edu. Um, I'm glad to talk. Uh, all I do is look at my computer in my basement anymore. So feel free to send me an email. I'll be glad to write back. So again, we want to open up the floor for questions. Anybody? Any takers? If not, I do have a question for who's on the line. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, so I was wondering, you said it for like the history program, right? So is it like when you're doing like, are you like studying about like the world or is it like, can it be like specified like you want to study like, like a, like a specific like continent or, or region? Can you do that or no? We are geared really to give, uh, give focus mostly to African American history. Um, I mean, I'm saying African American history, but it's in the the broad kind of uh, view. So that's not just you know sixteen o whatever on. Um, you know that's really going back into the you know deep into the diaspora. Um, and again, you know, paired with some of the classes that we've been running in English lately. Um, you know, we, we've developed a pretty strong set of courses in Afrofuturism. So I want to say like, and into the future or something lame like that. Oh, thank you. So I do have a question for you. Sure. Well, it was for um, the gentleman. That's I'm sorry, <laughs> Dr. Farish. That's all right. Um, where are you from? You know, what drove you here to come to our open house tonight? And what made you interested in um, the College of Arts and Science and history in particular? Um, I'm, I'm actually from uh, Disney Pan of Virginia. And uh, I, I, I received one of your emails and I'm just I'm trying to like see like the best college for me. And uh, I, wa I wanted to pursue like a career in history to be like a historian or something. Perfect. Thank you and welcome again. Like I said, our, our we've we've got uh, three full time faculty in that just do history. Um, one of them is uh, is definitely her sort of uh, investment is in traditional history scholarship. Um, her her area of publishing expertise is in sort of uh, the history of medicine in the United States, but she has written a lot about sort of the history of medical practice um, in and around the black community. Yeah. Um, another professor, her thing is, a, is more public history. So she has done research that ultimately ends up in um, exhibitions and sort of museum pieces. Um, and her expertise is in uh, fashion design history. And then uh, our most recent hire, she has a PhD from Morgan State, and she does, again, uh, a lot of public history geared toward uh, museum pieces and things like that. Um, her strengths are in sort of uh, civil rights up through kind of the hip hop era. 
Mm -hmm. um, but they definitely have a, a really strong uh, sort of social justice, civil rights, uh, you know, kind of a, a black revolutionary studies kind of thing. I see you smiling. Is that something you're trying to study or go into further? Uh, yeah, I always wanted to st study more about like, uh, like before, like the like before, like the civil rights, like how what was life like during Jim Crow and stuff. Yeah, for sure. And I think also attending an HBCU gives you that experience not only through your history classes, but you get that perspective through your math courses, through your English courses, through all the courses that you will take as a student. So you won't even just get that core of that during your history, but you'll also get it throughout your tenure at Coppin. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I can say that, uh, you know, I, my colleagues uh, across the street in the uh, social sciences department um, in anthropology and political science and even uh, right now we're piloting a class that's going to be kind of team taught effort across departments. Um, just broadly on the black experience that's taught by a professor of social work and one of our uh, part time historians um, who's also a, a cop and grad um, and a, he works full time at the the university library at Howard. Um, they're sort of piloting this kind of interdisciplinary thing that should be really cool. Thank you. Um, maybe uh, for people who are going to watch this later on the on the repeat, um, I can definitely say that uh, everybody, everybody at Coppin gets a, a strong uh, serving of humanities because we have a, a really big role to play in the, the general ed program. So, you know, if you come in as a, a first time freshman, um, your, your first two years are mostly going to be taken up with uh, general education courses, um, which sounds like a boring name, but it's really the heart of what a liberal arts college is all about. Um, taking a little bit of knowledge from every discipline and weaving them together to make a, you know, a whole smart person. So we, we have a, a big footprint. There are five classes just in humanities. I mean, you kind of get to pick and choose, so you get a little bit of creative expression, a little bit of history, a little bit of, uh, you know, various literature classes that we all. So, I don't know if you have any more questions or if you want to know anything. And now is the time, you know, we have that one-on-one -on -one, um, intimate experience right now. So, of course, within reason, we can answer questions, but by all means, if you want to know things about like the demographics of Coppin, if you want to know things about like the culture, we'll be happy to address those as well. And you have to anticipate all the questions that the people who watch the recording are going to ask. Good point. <laughs> yes. Uh, is there a SAT, is there a SAT requirement for the college? So there is a SAT requirement. I don't know exactly what that looks like because of COVID now, but I can tell you to reach out to admissions and they'll be able to give you uh, more of a perspective of what that looks like. Okay, thank you. No problem. It's not prohibitive, like, um, and I, I think that for this year, they're probably waiving the SAT. My oldest son is a senior right now, so he's having to deal with the same questions. Which means it's a great time to apply because you don't have to worry about that, if that will be the case. So crossing fingers, but yes, I do urge those who are looking out there and watching us on the screen. If you want to get into Coppin State University, 
with the time frame that we are in now, now is the time because if they are waiving SAT scores, this is your ticket in. Just a little PSA there. <laughs> we are by far the most affordable, uh, comprehensive liberal arts college in the state of Maryland by far. Probably in the region. I would definitely agree to that. I don't know about schools in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, um, but definitely cheaper than anything in Maryland, Virginia, Delaware, DC. Which is, let's be honest, a, a thing, you know, if you're going to study the humanities, um, you know, I, I hopefully no one from any of these uh, hoity-toity colleges listens in and calls me on this. But, you know, um, I, I, I couldn't reasonably advise, like I said, I have a, a senior in high school in my house right now. And I, I couldn't be cool with him going to like a George Washington University and borrowing $40,000. Um, to study art history. Um, I think art history is absolutely a good thing to study uh, anytime, anywhere, um, but you really kind of these days have to at least give some consideration to in the investment that you're making. Um, here, you know, uh, at the end of the day, it's less than $10,000 a year, um, and, and you're getting a, an intimate college experience um that elsewhere um that kind of experience costs you uh huge private school money so you get the private school experience here without having to pay the tab yes i definitely agree are you looking to join any um clubs or organizations Is there like a history club? Yeah, and a uh, history honor society. Um, that's m sort of passes as both honor society and the general club. Um, I can tell you that there are uh, in in our majors. I, I don't know. Again, I, I don't mind saying this since my my colleagues from other departments aren't here. Um, but generally. Speaking, the humanities majors are the ones that capture all the smartest people on campus. Um, we have really, uh, we compete generally for the highest GPAs uh, per department on campus. Um, and history is always definitely a leader in that. I think the average GPA in history is uh, well over 3.0. So virtually everybody uh, takes some kind of part in the, the history honor society. And I can attest to that as an academic advisor. I have noted that a lot of the students who have well over 3.0, as Dr. Forrest mentioned, are in the history department or in there somewhere in the um, humanities department. So I will say that generally they do tend to mentor their students and ensure that they matriculate through the university within not only the four year to five year range, but also having a 3.0 and higher. So they give the resources that are needed for students to succeed. Thank you. Um, obviously, since March, it's been weird times for us. Um, we're we we I don't know between plays that the, the theater folks are putting on and dance performances and readings uh, that English majors are giving in the, the uh, you know, in the mid, middle of the fall and then again in like April and May, um, you know, our event schedule has been all thrown into whack with COVID, but hopefully, uh, the Biden administration will get everybody nice and vaccinated and we'll be back to living life again. Um, there's a big event that the history department puts on where we uh, we actually use um, a bit of our department's budget to pay for a, 
uh, you know, generally speaking, uh, we try to get an alum uh, to come back and give sort of a talk about their research that they're doing in grad school or in their, you know, uh, at work. Uh, one of our alums, the, the last time we had this event, which was, you know, uh, the previous April before COVID, um, she came in from a, a national parks position where she's a docent at the, um, I want to say that's at the Hampton uh, National Historic Site in Towson here uh, near the near campus. Um, she came in and gave a talk about the, you know, various research activities and uh, exhibitions that are going on there. Um, and that sort of dovetails with the uh, induction ceremony for the Honors Society. So it's always a, a nice event. And I'm assuming by you being from Virginia, you're looking to live on campus? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, well, perfect. We do have two dormitories that are on site um, that are directly across from the cafeteria, so you don't have to walk too far to get your food and come back and forth, luckily. Um, and we also have other programming that surrounds the dorm. So right now we're in the process of implementing some programs that will help acclimate the students that are in the dorms now that are freshmen. And so hopefully you'll be a part of that as well. And those of you who are watching at home too. And whatever the president might say about rats and rodents, um, Baltimore is a kick-ass city. Um, it's great. There's all kinds of cool stuff to do. Um, there's things to do in Baltimore that uh, are equivalent to or better than what's on offer in D.C. Um, I was a member of the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra, um, and it, it, it cost me uh, little, less than 100 dollars and I got to go to the symphony all season long um, every single time I went there was parking right across the street um, anytime uh, I've been it's not like I go a lot but anytime I go to the Baltimore Museum of Art you can park literally across the street and take the subway like you do in DC um, things are inexpensive the community really wants you to get involved Baltimore is a great city. And as being a native, thank you for that. I do appreciate that because a lot of times we get that stereotype, especially those who come from rural areas that, you know, there's a lot of crime, there's a lot of things that happen. You hear about the wire, of course, you know, the showing of that. But to be honest, specifically with Coppin, it's very safe. Um, it is in the middle of the city, you know, in terms of that, but however, we have little actually no police activity really to my recollection that's on campus the most part we see security walking in and out to make sure that everybody is safe but in terms of those in the neighborhood and those coming on campus there's no concern there i've never had a situation where i felt that i needed to you know make sure i constantly look behind my back to make sure nobody was going to come and you know rob me um, the community is respective of that campus. They do not trespass. They do not come on, vandalize. If you really go on campus, as you can see in the background with the uh, mascot, um, we have a quadrangle. We also have um, different areas where students can hang out. Of course, you know, with COVID, that's a little limited right now. But, you know, there's places where students can hang out and still feel safe. So I don't want people thinking that, oh, it's Baltimore, especially, you know, some of the bad publicity that we received over the years. But as a native, I will say that Coppin is one of those um, diamond in the rough areas where people can come get a great education and also still have that college experience safely. Five dollar lift ride. There's all kinds of awesome, cool stuff for free to do every single day, every single weekend. Um, again, you know, we'll get ourselves all vaccinated up and we can go back out in public and eat in restaurants and stuff. It'll be good times. And on Wednesdays, we have to talk about the fried chicken Wednesday culture. So as an HBCU, 
we do participate in the fried chicken Wednesdays. So that's the day on Wednesday that you will come to the cafeteria and you have, you know, a good home cooked meal, um, the mac and cheese, the sweet potatoes, you know, depending on what they're offering for that day. So if you're concerned about the food, I know for me, when I attended college, I was a foodie and I'm like, OK, this cooking has to be good. So in order for me to be here and um, I would say that Coppin has never let me down in terms of food wise, if I want to go over there to get a quick grab of something. They um, they actually recently partnered recently partnered with somebody milk and honey. If you're familiar with that restaurant, shout out to them. I love them, um, but they're a um, well known restaurant out here in the Prince George's County area where I live. Um, but they've partnered with several other districts and schools that I'm hearing. And so they partnered with Coppin recently. So sometimes we partner with local businesses to get some of that good um, cuisine that students are looking for. So. Our dining hall is run by a family owned catering company. At most other colleges, it's like some huge corporate food conglomerate that also supplies food to prisons and things like that, you know? We have it good. And they're really sweet people too. Yeah. They look, sometimes they give you extra rolls if you're really nice to them. So we make nice to them. I'm trying to think if there's anything that uh, I could add for folks who are going to watch this recording later, um, but I can't think of anything right now. It's kind of been a long day. Um, again, give us a, a call or an email. It's s forest with two R's at coppin.edu. Um, or you could call and leave me a message at 410951. 6183. Um, my office phone rings on my laptop and I get it at my uh, my cell phone. So I'm glad to take calls and answer questions and convince you to come all that. I'm not sure if you have any more questions for us. I see that your hand was raised, but I don't know if that was from before. Yeah, um, I was asking, um, do you guys have like a esports department or no? Yes. Yes, we do. I was going to actually mention that you must have got my vibes in my head. So we do have a huge um, esports leading on our social media platforms. And so a lot of the students um, have been competing in different um, leagues that they have. I'm not really familiar with the language, so please don't beat me up on it. But I know there is a huge gaming base um, that is for students. And a lot of them have won, I want to say. I don't know if they've won money. Don't quote me on that. But I know they have won something because of their gaming efforts. And so Hopefully that entices anyone who's out there in the esports world to um, join the league um, as well. And they do have cash prizes because I have posted on our personal cop and advising page, shameless plug, um, in terms of some of those events that are coming up. So they do a lot for the cop and community as well as for students to get them involved. Our men's basketball team uh, took Duke to uh, it, it was a six point game with like three minutes left the other night. Oh, yeah. Shout out to the basketball team. And other sports teams. I don't want to leave you all out as well. <laughs> Tennis, volleyball. We have a women's bowling team. How cool is that? Women's bowling, you know, go to the bowling alley, watch your team do their thing as well as track and field.
and we have that we have other organizations too i believe there's an anime club if you're into anime i know i like it so we do watch that um or they have a club right rather that associated with that um they have a modeling fashion club for those who are into fashion and modeling um they usually perform during homecoming oh and not to mention homecoming is not the traditional homecoming that generally colleges have during the fall. We have ours in the winter, so we'll be coming up in February. Um, and so it happens around February every year for students to come back um, because it's centralized around basketball. Since we do have a football team, but it's a rec team, so they're trying to move it to make it into a league as well. I'm trying to think of anything else if there's like any other questions i'm thinking back to when i was an undergrad or looking for a school what were some of the questions that i had uh the library is maybe a, a little on the smaller side uh but that means that it's nice and comfy and cozy a good place to study uh but it does come with uh a partnership with the entire university system of maryland so if our library doesn't have what you're looking for. Um, it's definitely accessible. We have partnerships with the Hopkins Library, which is nearby. So again, like you're paying uh, inexpensive public school money for big time private school resources. Um, library and its uh, relationships is definitely a good thing. Um, for me as a, a practicing scholar of literature, um, I'm always able to get what I need uh, through, you know, one one uh, loan partnership or another. Yep, and they're still open too. you know, even though we're in COVID, they have um, some protocol that they're going by in terms of students being able to use the laptops and the computers that are there in case they do not have the access at home. And so they are open, they are open currently um, as well as the math lab. We have a math um, center for students who need help in certain areas of math and then we also have a writing lab as well for students to utilize to help them with their English papers or if they have a pro um, project that needs to be submitted they're able to review that and give them great feedback on what they can do to strengthen those um, pieces of writing. Yeah, the writing lab is in my area too so they've definitely uh, over the past two years they've uh, made the jump and it's a real 21st century operation. They can do um, all of that sort of tutoring and, uh, you know, reviewing of papers electronically and virtually too. Not just for English, they work for everybody, even grad students. Well, I'm not sure if you have any other questions, but I know Dr. Forrest has mentioned um, his contact information. Do you mind providing that for us one more time, Dr. Forrest? Sure, sure. Uh, email is sforrest, uh, forrest with two R's, at coppin.edu, um, or my office phone number is 410-951-6183. Um, I'm up for talking anytime, all the time. Give me a call, send me an email. I'll be glad to answer your questions. Perfect. And thank you all for joining us tonight for our Netflix and chill. Try saying that three times fast. Um, of our open house. And we thank you all for attending. And we hope to see you in the future. We can't wait to have future Eagles like you join us. Thanks. Bye.